What if you never had to go to a website to click buy now again? What if your AI just bought things for you? I'm Sammy Cohen, and this is Social Currency, a podcast that unpacks the stories that are shaping business, culture, and the intersection of the two. The way we shop online is about to change forever. Because on September 29th, OpenAI and Stripe announced something that could fundamentally reshape e-commerce as we know it. For the first time, you'll be able to research a product, get personalized recommendations, and complete a purchase all without ever leaving ChatGPT. No links, no redirects, just seamless conversational commerce. And this isn't just a new feature. It's the beginning of something called agentic commerce, and it could be the biggest threat Google has faced in decades. First, let me paint a picture of what just happened. Stripe and OpenAI co-developed something called Agentic Commerce Protocol. It's an open standard that allows AI assistants to handle complete transactions on behalf of users. Starting now, ChatGPT users in the US can buy products from Etsy merchants directly in the chat interface. Soon this will expand to over a million Shopify merchants, which includes brands like Glossier, Viore, Spanx, and Skims. So here's how it works. You're chatting with ChatGPT and ask for a product recommendation. Maybe you need hiking gear for a specific climate, or you're just looking for a gift. ChatGPT suggests products, and when you're ready to buy, a Stripe-powered checkout appears right there in the conversation. You select your payment method and complete the purchase. Here's the critical innovation. Stripe issues what they call a Shared Payment Token, or SPT. And this lets ChatGPT initiate a payment without exposing your payment credentials. The merchant processes the transaction through Stripe, or if they prefer, they can use another payment provider while this is still benefiting from Stripe's fraud protection scores. ChatGPT essentially acts as your AI shopping agent, like having a personal shopper who knows exactly what you need. Now, when I posted a mini video on the subject on my social pages, I had a handful of people and companies reach out to me saying, yes, there is still a need for the curation side of it, AKA how are the products going to be presented to you in the first place? And there are a handful of startups that are trying to win in this space. One that I'm watching right now is called Daydream, which is a personal AI agent for fashion. And it was started by an ex Sephora and Stitch Fix executive who also started a company called The Yes, which was acquired by Pinterest. So let's talk about how this will change shopping behavior for real. This OpenAI partnership with Stripe represents a fundamental shift in how commerce even works. For years, the e-commerce journey has been fragmented. There's search on Google, research on Reddit or YouTube, compare prices across sites, and then finally purchase. It's a broken experience that forces us to jump between platforms and start over multiple times. Now, AI is collapsing that entire funnel into a single conversation. So we're witnessing something unprecedented, the death of traditional search for commerce. So your search volume on Google might be declining, not because you're shopping less, but because you're asking ChatGPT instead. Think about it this way. How many times have you Googled best running shoes only to find results littered with affiliate optimized content that prioritizes whoever pays the most commission? The internet has become polluted with SEO optimized garbage designed to capture affiliate revenue, not provide honest recommendations. And AI promises to cut through that noise, but there's a catch and it's a big one. The quality of AI recommendations recommendations depends entirely on the quality of information it can access. And right now, much of the open web is exactly that kind of polluted junk that we're trying to escape. And this new technology solution is going to make it easier for consumers to actually check out, but we will still have the backend information pipeline that will need to be filled in with legitimate non-sponsored reviews in order to make sure that the AI generated options that are presented are truly the best. So now let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is Google. Google has operated the most successful freemium business model ever created. They built a superior search engine and everyone started using it for free and then they monetized it through AdWords, we know that. But here is another key insight. Those ads worked because they were actually useful. When you searched tennis racket, the sponsored results gave you what you actually wanted to see. A huge portion of consumer spending starts with that little search box and Google gets a cut of it all through their cost per click advertising. The entire model though is under threat and it's not necessarily impending doom as if the model is going to feel significant hurt over the next year, but this massive shift in consumer behavior may very well eat at Google's profits eventually. 
a lot of the free searches are moving to ChatGPT, like who won the women's tennis gold medal at the Olympics in 1992. Those types of searches don't make Google money, but they do keep people in the habit of using Google for everything, including commercial searches. So when the habit breaks down, the commercial searches follow. And for now, the high intent commercial searches, the ones that actually make money, are still happening on Google. But for how much longer? In an AI-mediated world, Google doesn't control the presentation layer anymore. If ChatGPT is intermediating the shopping experience, Google loses both the search traffic and the advertising opportunity. Now, not all shopping will shift to AI at the same pace. On one extreme, you have impulse purchases that aren't going away. You're going to continue to remember, oh shoot, I don't have my toothbrush when I'm on a work trip and I need to run to CVS to go pick one up. On the other side, you have the highly considered and more expensive purchases your houses, cars, wedding venues. These involve significant research, but you'll still want in-person experiences, the touching, seeing, and feeling, and talking to experts. AI helps with the research, but it won't complete the sale. The massive middle ground is where AI dominates. These are purchases that require research and consideration, but don't need a physical experience. So think of this like a laptop purchase, bike, hiking gear, skincare products, etc. It's really where AI can truly understand your specific needs through a conversation and make genuinely personalized recommendations. So now this brings us to OpenAI's monetization strategy, which is genuinely novel. Right now, OpenAI makes money through ChatGPT subscriptions and API usage. But with instant checkout, they're tapping into commerce revenue, which is a massive new stream. Think about the scale. It's trillions of dollars annually, and even a small percentage of transaction value represents enormous revenue potential. The agentic commerce protocol is designed to be merchant friendly. Merchants remain the merchant of record. They own the customer relationship. The orders still flow through their existing systems with proper attribution, and fees are transparent. Critically, merchants can choose whether to use Stripe's instant checkout or direct customers to their own online stores. This matters because it avoids the platform lock-in and adversarial relationship that has plagued other commerce platforms. OpenAI and Stripe seem to be taking a different approach to enable the transaction, take a cut, but lets the merchants maintain control. So let's talk about what happens next. The implications ripple outward in so many fascinating ways. For consumers, shopping becomes dramatically simpler. Imagine an AI agent that knows you always buy a specific laundry detergent, monitors pricing across the internet, and automatically purchases it when it's 30% off somewhere. Or one that remembers you're hiking in Scotland next month and proactively suggests gear based on the forecasted weather. Now for merchants, this represents both opportunity and challenge. Those on Shopify get automatic access to AI-driven sales channels, but the entire infrastructure of e-commerce needs to evolve. How should websites be structured for AI browsing? How does attribution work when an AI intermediates the entire journey? And for the other platforms, the Googles and Amazons and traditional retailers, this is all an existential threat. The companies that figure out how to play in this new world will be the ones that thrive. The ones that don't will find themselves increasingly irrelevant. We're not just witnessing a new feature rollout, we're watching the architecture of commerce being rebuilt from the ground up for an AI-first world. The death of search doesn't mean search disappears. It means search becomes invisible, embedded in conversation, and happening automatically on your behalf. Shopping stops being something you do to the internet, and it actually becomes something that the internet does for you. Stripe and OpenAI just fired the starting gun on that future, and ready or not, it's already here. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Social Currency. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next week. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of Social Currency. I've been wanting to launch this show for so long. I can't tell you how excited I am to do this and how thrilled I am that you're actually here listening. It means the world to me. If you liked what you heard today, please rate and review the podcast because it massively helps to support the work I do to bring the show to life. And if you want to keep up with the hottest business lore in real time, follow me on Instagram at Sammy Cohen Talks and subscribe to my newsletter, Social Currency, which is linked in the show notes. Social Currency is a production of Social Currency Media and Money News Network. The podcast is hosted and executive produced by me, Sammy Cohen. Social Currency is produced by the Money News Network team. See you next time.